New Glenn reached orbit, while SpaceX's Starship still hasn't. A lot of people took that as proof and rushed to call Jeff Bezos's rocket a Starship killer. That view is completely wrong. There's no denying Blue Origin's achievement and the huge progress they've made. It's impressive. But Starship isn't meant to stop at low Earth orbit. It's designed for the Moon, for Mars, and far beyond. So, why is Starship, a vehicle that hasn't yet reached orbit, still considered humanity's future? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On January 16, 2025, the space industry witnessed one of the most remarkable coincidences in history. Blue Origin's long-awaited New Glenn rocket lifted off for the very first time, just hours before SpaceX launched Starship's seventh test flight. From its pad at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, New Glenn, powered by seven BE-4 engines, thundered into the night sky at 2 a.m., carrying the Blue Ring Pathfinder spacecraft. The second stage successfully reached its planned Earth orbit, marking a huge milestone in Blue Origin's certification program with the U.S. space program. Roughly half a day later, over at Starbase, Texas, SpaceX's Starship Flight 7, featuring Booster 14 and Ship 33, the first upgraded Block 2 variant, took to the skies. But the mission ended in tragedy. A fuel leak led to a fire and a mid-air explosion, prompting an FAA investigation and grounding all future flights for the time being. From that moment on, everything seemed to flip. The event became a turning point, a kind of cosmic lever that shifted the spotlight entirely onto Blue Origin. One side was praised, the other criticized, and the already fierce rivalry between the two companies suddenly grew even more intense. However, it's been almost 10 months since that day, and Blue Origin still seems to be living in the glory of its very first success. Meanwhile, SpaceX has already left them far behind. Why is that? Well, in that same period, SpaceX went on to launch four more Starship test flights, and the last two, flights 10 and 11, were nothing short of spectacular. They finally proved that the Super Heavy booster could be reused, while the Starship upper stage successfully deployed dummy Starlinks, endured the harsh environment of space, and made a safe return to Earth. Those achievements paved the way for SpaceX to smoothly transition to Starship version 3, which is expected to take performance and reliability even further. But what about New Glenn? Over the past 10 months, Blue Origin has spent most of its time fixing the issues from that very first mission, such as the failed drone ship landing that ended in an explosion. There hasn't been a single additional test flight since then. And just recently in mid-October, when Blue Origin moved New Glenn from its Rocket Park facility at KSC Florida to launch Complex 36 in preparation for the rocket's second flight, another problem surfaced. According to internal reports, the vehicle suffered minor damage to its second stage during transport. Now, while this hasn't been officially confirmed, it still says a lot. It shows just how fragile the rocket might be. Meanwhile, over at Starbase, SpaceX has rolled starships back and forth dozens of times before launch, sent them through fiery plasma re-entry, and still managed to keep them in one piece. Yet, somehow, many still label New Glenn as a starship killer. Yeah, it's true, Starship has flown 11 times and still hasn't reached orbit. But that's not a technical failure, so much as SpaceX's deliberate iterative development strategy. Take small steps, learn from each failure, and avoid huge early risks. Those test flights are all about collecting real data on both stages, Super Heavy and Ship, with a focus on Raptor performance and stability, heat shield behavior, and the aerodynamics you need for long-range missions. The plan is for the first orbital attempt to come with V3, targeted in 2026, once V2's suborbital flights are stable. A deliberate next step to prepare for bolder moves like Mechazilla catch and orbital refueling. And if reaching orbit is all it takes to beat SpaceX, then that's a huge mistake. SpaceX has already completed hundreds of successful orbital missions with the Falcon 9, a medium lift rocket, and the Falcon Heavy, their heavy lift workhorse. That alone proves they've already mastered this game. As of October 26, 2025, Falcon 9 has flown 564 times, with 561 successes, including 136 launches in 2025 alone, 
accounting for more than 70% of all orbital launches worldwide. To put that into perspective, NASA's space shuttle took 30 years to reach that same number, while SpaceX did it in just one. And let's not forget, Blue Origin didn't reach orbit until 2025, while SpaceX has been doing it routinely since 2010. So, before anyone talks about competing with Starship, maybe try catching up to Falcon Heavy first. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy is the true king of heavy lift rockets, a proven monster that's delivered 11 flawless missions since 2018. It can haul 63.8 tons to low Earth orbit, all while keeping costs ridiculously low thanks to reusable boosters that land as gracefully as something out of a movie. I mean, just look at it. Three boosters touching down almost simultaneously. No one else on Earth can do that. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's new Glenn is still stuck in what feels like an endless cycle of delays, almost a decade behind schedule. Its payload capacity? Just 45 tons. It's got a massive fairing, sure, but it's only made one flight so far. The BE-4 engines took so long to develop that even NASA was getting frustrated. And the idea of reusing the booster 25 times sounds great on paper. But so far, they've managed one orbital flight, and it's taking them nearly a year just to prepare for the second. Oh, and here's the kicker. SpaceX is already upgrading SLC-6, the old Titan launch pad abandoned in the early 2000s, transforming it into a multi-purpose site for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. The plan includes a brand new launch tower, booster recovery systems, landing zones, and infrastructure capable of supporting up to five Falcon Heavy missions per year. In short, Falcon Heavy is out there dominating space, while New Glenn is still daydreaming on paper. Classic all talk, no action, from Jeff Bezos. No wonder Blue Origin has spent its entire existence trying and failing to beat SpaceX even once. If even Falcon Heavy can't be matched, then forget about competing with Starship. To be fair, the right comparison isn't between New Glenn and Falcon Heavy, it's between New Glenn and Super Heavy, Starship's first stage. Super Heavy is powered by 33 Raptor 3 engines, each producing about 280 tons of thrust. That's over 9,000 tons combined. In other words, it's four times more powerful than New Glenn. And that's not just theory, it's already been proven in action. Super Heavy has never failed to lift Starship off the pad and it's even pulled off multiple successful landings on the Mechazilla Tower. Compare that to New Glenn's booster, which couldn't even make it through its very first flight without failing. And when it comes to Starship's upper stage, even though it hasn't reached orbit yet, it's still seen as the future of humanity. Why? Because Starship isn't just another rocket. It's a fully reusable interplanetary transportation system designed to carry hundreds of people and thousands of tons of cargo to the moon once it completes its role in the Artemis III mission. As NASA's chosen human landing system, Starship will perform on-orbit refueling, a technology that's never been done before, to deliver American astronauts back to the lunar surface for the first time since 1972. After that, it will pave the way for the first uncrewed missions to Mars, laying the foundation for a self-sustaining city on the Red Planet, SpaceX's ultimate goal, making life multiplanetary. Elon Musk summed it up perfectly in a recent post on X. I am confident that Starship will land humans on Mars. That path is clear, but what really matters is securing the future of consciousness, not just getting a small number of people to Mars. That probably requires getting over 100,000 people and 1 million tons of cargo to Mars. To achieve that insane dream, Musk will need an even bigger vehicle, Starship V-4. This new upper stage, stretching 61 meters tall and powered by nine Raptor engines, is designed to carry a significantly larger payload than any previous version, making it the backbone of his interplanetary vision. But to truly understand Musk's goal, you have to look at the entire system. A single crewed mission to Mars would require multiple orbital refueling flights, somewhere between five and seven tanker launches per mission. Starship V-4's larger design will make that process more efficient, but to reach Musk's long-term target of one million tons of cargo, it'll still take thousands of launches. If SpaceX can ramp up to 100 flights per year, their stated goal at Starbase, and each flight carries 150 tons, then reaching a million tons could take as little as seven years. That's actually achievable, 
assuming manufacturing and reusability are fully optimized. For people, Musk estimates Starship 54 could carry over 100 passengers per trip. That means roughly 1,000 flights to deliver 100,000 people to Mars, a 10-year timeline at 100 launches per year. But given the launch window constraints, that's likely to stretch across two or three decades. Still, Musk emphasizes that the real goal isn't just getting there, it's reaching the critical threshold where a colony becomes self-sustaining. That means building infrastructure, housing, power systems, and agriculture all in parallel. Starship V4 will play a key role in that effort, deploying prefabricated structures, equipment, and materials through a series of uncrewed cargo missions, even transforming landed ships into habitable bases on the Martian surface. Each mission will literally pave the way for the first long-term human presence on Mars. By comparison, Blue Origin's New Glenn, even after reaching orbit, is still focused purely on orbital payload delivery, with no plans for human transport or deep space missions. Meanwhile, Starship VU-4, though still in development, is being engineered from the ground up to push past those limits, built not for Earth orbit, but for the multi-planetary future of our species. And while Elon Musk dreams of turning humans into a multi-planetary species, Jeff Bezos has an equally crazy dream of his own. One that sounds straight out of a science fiction novel. He wants to see millions of people living in space by 2045, inside enormous rotating space habitats known as O'Neill Cylinders, self-contained worlds that simulate gravity and even Earth-like environments. Bezos took inspiration from physicist Gerard K. O'Neill, who envisioned giant rotating colonies filled with farms, factories, and even forests. The idea is to protect Earth by moving heavy industries like mining and manufacturing off the planet. But to achieve that dream, Bezos seems to be doing the opposite or maybe not trying hard enough. Instead of building the road to space, he's been selling tickets to it, focusing on luxury space tourism for the ultra-rich, like the recent flight featuring Katy Perry a few months ago.